right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and it's Friday, baby. It is Friday. So to be honest, I don't want to spend too much time on the charts today. I just want to point out a few changes or a few updates and just say that these are the important things. These are the things we need to be aware of. For the most part, I want to save the deep dive for the weekend as always. So without further ado, okay, Bob Lucas posted this. He thinks we've got a long account and maybe this is what's going on. Maybe we've got a full new daily cycle ahead of us for the S&P 500. I asked him, look, wouldn't this make more sense? Wouldn't it make more sense that we've actually had a slightly earlier one and that we're halfway through a current daily cycle and all of this would comprise a nice normal 26 week weekly cycle denoted by the blue arrows? And he said that would make more sense given the S&P is 21 weeks into a massive move. But now I'm not exactly sure what he meant by but I think he just means but we could well be in a massive blow off top. And if that's the case, then, you know, markets can remain extended for extended periods of time. So I said, maybe we'll see one of those 31 week cycle lows occasionally the 26 weekly cycle can be extended as much as 30 or 31 weeks, which would push this out and give us plenty of upside. I'm okay with that. That would probably be quite an easy money environment. I'm sure crypto would do very well in that environment as well. So I'm easy if that's what's going to come. Over in the world of Bitcoin, Bitcoin may well have confirmed a 57 day cycle low, but it may still be vulnerable to having one more rollover and an undercut, as you can see here. So we're going to find out soon enough. I know a lot of people get really stressed when I say potentially we've got a cycle low here and then we start to trade downwards afterwards. But just remember the rule, okay? All the while we're above that low, it is a valid cycle low. The cycle has not failed and thus we should continue to expect further upside over the next 60 day cycle. If this undercuts in the next couple of days, okay, makes a new low and then forms a swing, very, very good chance that ends up being a day 60, 62, something like that cycle low. We mark that and then from there, we should be coming out of here swinging. So again, not really the end of the world, so long as you're not degenerate and not managing your risk properly. The key thing here is it's very binary, right? It's black or white. If we are above that low, then we still have a valid cycle. We are still looking to resolve to the upside. Also got this nice summary here from Credible Crypto. He is pointing out, essentially the same thing using a different method, right? We could well chop down here, come down, make a slightly higher low above that. Again, we would not be at this point taking out the prior cycle low, would we? We'd still be holding above that day 57 cycle low before then compression and expansion. Cred also says if we did happen to come out, come down and take out that low, then we could see us make a new swing somewhere around the 59k region, right? Something like this down to 59k and then hopefully off we go to the races. So two different methods that come to ultimately the same conclusion, either the low holds and we move higher, or we've got one more lower low to make, and then we should have a very good chance at continuation to the upside. So if you are stressed about this, I would say, don't worry, Brexit probably just needs a couple more days to cross over, and then we we'll should be able to see the resumption of the uptrend. So in the very short term, I think we are close to seeing a bounce. I think we're close to seeing that daily cycle low and a resumption of the primary uptrend. But in the more medium term, the top for Bitcoin probably isn't very far away, especially once long term holders start to sell. So in black, we've got the Bitcoin price, of course, in orange, we've got the long term holder supply. And you can see whenever the long term holders start to dump, right, they start to sell. We typically see the top come in in the not too distant future. Tells us to keep an open mind about continuing to see long term holders unwind their position into the last final portion of this top move for Bitcoin before then, of course, we probably have to entertain at the worst case scenario, a left translated cycle top and an extended bear market. Or if you don't believe that's the case, then we probably will at the least have to see some kind of major retracement followed by it, then hopefully a second pump into a right translated cycle top as ever one day at a time. But as you can see, right, we're getting closer than most people are ready for to see in the top come in for Bitcoin. Miles is also a very big proponent of this. He loves his hodl wave. And you can see whenever this thing rolls over, right, good things happen to the price of Bitcoin, but the top is nigh. Same deal here, right? When this metric rolls over, good things happen to the price of Bitcoin, but the top is nigh. It's the exact same thing here and here. And now we're starting to see this holder wave roll over, potentially telling us that the top is nigh for Bitcoin. This year, I've been saying over and over again, is going to be wild, okay? And I continue to say that we've seen nothing yet. This is the kind of wildness I'm talking about, okay? We are going to continue to witness history just as we have just witnessed history. The S&P 500 has officially added $10 trillion in market cap since the October 27th low. So since October 27th, the S&P is up a whopping 1,150 points or 28%. And that means the index has added $10 trillion in just 97 trading days. That is equal to $103 billion per day since October the 27th. Okay, so what a wild time to be alive. This is absolutely unprecedented, but it's probably going to continue, right? It is probably going to continue. And of course, the question is, how high can this thing go? It can probably go at least another thousand or so points from here. But 
don't get it twisted, a new cycle begins, okay? Rate cuts have occurred in Switzerland and Mexico. So the cutting cycle is probably not too far away. The Fed has, of course, signaled that it is thinking about a minimum of three rate cuts this year. We might see the first one as early as June or July. And thus, again, similarly with Bitcoin, the end is probably nigh, okay? Usually when they start to cut rates, we see the top come in within zero and two months for the stock market. So if we assume the best case scenario is the onset of the cutting cycle starts in July, that tells us that somewhere between July and September, we should see the top come in for the stock market. Plenty of things are pointing to a midsummer top ish for Bitcoin as well. And then of course the question becomes what happens from there, right? Do we finally get that deflationary bust? That is to be determined. For now though, I think we have got some more upside to enjoy, some more gains to be made. But as you can see, right, the writing is kind of on the wall for the people that are able to see it. So as I said at the start, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the charts. I'm just gonna point at a couple of things and say that's something we need to be aware of. First of all, DXY right into resistance. So a breakout here could spell trouble, okay? Now it doesn't have to. We can have at times the DXY running whilst risk and Bitcoin runs. That does happen from time to time occasionally. They don't have to move inversely to each other. But if this thing can roll over one last time into a three year cycle low, that would probably make our life a lot easier in terms of finding a blow off top for risk and crypto. This move into resistance is causing gold to go on a wind up, right? Gold is kind of trolling at the moment and it's kind of the exact same situation as I was just talking about for Bitcoin. Now we've got a daily cycle. We confirmed it with a trend line break and a nice strong push. Is this breakout retest looking for resumption higher? If so, happy days. Or is this about to be a day one, two, three cycle high, followed by a cycle failure, meaning we trade below the, the cycle low, and then that will tell us to be open to seeing a declining cycle into the next daily cycle low time frame. So this would be notice a left translated daily cycle, meaning the top comes before the halfway point, and of course the cycle failure tells us to expect a lower low relative to this cycle low. So is that what's coming? I don't know. The reason I say this is on a wind up is because <laughs> You know, going back two days ago, this thing looks so, so, so bullish. And now it's kind of trolling everyone, right? Now it's kind of saying, well, actually that might've been a fake out. Historically speaking, when gold puts in a top heavy wick like that, such as here, right? Bad things follow the price of gold thereafter. But as I was saying, similarly for Bitcoin, right? It's the same binary black and white system. If price is above the daily cycle low, then we have not failed. It tells us to expect more bullish price action, more uptrend into that next daily cycle low. And if this price was to trade below that cycle low, then we would have a failed cycle and be expecting further downside. So absolutely zero requirement to worry here until we take out the cycle low from back here on Monday. All the while we're above that, long and strong continue to push and we will see what the market can give. Again, exactly the same thing for Bitcoin, right? All the while we're above that, all the while we're above the cycle low, holding support, then the thing is bullish. Even if we come all the way back down here and double bottom with it, we are still bullish, still looking for a strong push off to add a Bitcoin long out of here. Of course, it does not preclude a move lower, in which case we would have to mark that as the cycle low, so long as it is still inside the qualifying timing window. But again, absolutely no need to sweat this move until we at least violate the low from Wednesday. And of course, the stock market, as we were saying earlier, Long and strong, right? Just don't know where the cycles are at the moment, but they're gonna reveal themselves. I know some of you are asking me to put oscillators on the chart to show the divergence, and that is visible, right? That's clearly visible. We've got lower lows here, excuse me, lower highs on the oscillators, whilst the price is making higher highs. So there's clear divergence here. I'm not really an oscillator guy, I don't really care for them. And of course that can be invalidated with just one push above, but I do still think it's too risky to be chasing this market higher. I don't like Bob Lucas's count, although usually, when the two of us are in disagreement about something, he turns out to be more correct than I am. So we'll figure out who's right and who's wrong. It doesn't matter about who's right and wrong, of course. It just matters on staying on the right side of the trade. For now, though, if you're in, I think you can continue to push. We have got warning signs and mixed messages everywhere, right? Breakdown, retest, resumption, possibly. Or is this just breakout looking for continuation to the upside? I'm going to find out soon enough. I've still got my exposure via the Dow. We'll still keep pushing this until it becomes unreasonable to do so. Same is true of the Russell 2K. Still pushing this. This probably has a lot of legs left in it if we really are going to go blow off top mode. But that's really all there is to say at this moment. You know, all the while we're above the cycle lows, then the cycles are valid. And there's really no reason to stress or worry about anything. I will say this for gold though, given that this is the start of a weekly cycle, okay, we've only had one daily cycle. If this is to come down and roll over and take that out, then I do wanna be cutting this position. I don't wanna be holding through a declining daily cycle for gold. And I know when I say things like this, a lot of people will be quick to say, yeah, well, you were bullish two days ago, right? Now you flipped to bearish. Yeah, well, 
I'm bullish all the while we're above the cycle low, right? But this is important. If the market speaks, I need to listen. It's no good when the market is going to roll over and print a failed cycle, me saying, well, I'm just going to remain bullish, right? I'm bullish until the market proves me wrong. Once the market tells me the chart is bearish, then I become bearish. And if it flips to bullish the next day, I'll flip with it, okay? So please don't be one of those people that's like, you were bearish, you you were bullish, you were, now you're bearish again, you keep flip-flopping. I'll flip-flop when the market tells me to flip-flop, okay? Like I said, bullish until we violate that cycle low. Violate the cycle low, we'll just take this little bit of profit and walk away and get out of the way of the market. And... If that was to happen, it'd be really, really nice for this, wouldn't it? If gold rolls over now, right, as Bitcoin is about to find a daily cycle low and fly, then the fulfillment of this fractal will be even easier. So something to keep in mind, like I said, don't be one of those people that's like, well, you were bullish and now you're bearish. Yeah, I'm, I'm bullish until I'm invalidated and then I'm bearish, okay? <laughs> and similarly, I'm bearish until I'm invalidated and then I'm bullish. So that's all there is to it, really. Long and strong across risk assets, long and strong until gold fails its daily cycle, and long and strong until Bitcoin fails its daily cycle. Other than that, there's really not much else to say. Like I said, I'll do the deep dive and the members only video tomorrow as always. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I hope you're doing well in life and take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.